Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating infinite looping hands in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based, and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff we don't normally go into on YouTube, and we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that'll give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can test it out and see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. This tutorial was requested by Alicio Sadler via the MoGraph subreddit on Reddit. Alicio wanted to know how to create this effect, and we looked all over the web to find the artist who originally created this, but we couldn't find them. So if you know who made this, just let us know and we'll make sure we credit them down below. Okay, so let's head over to Cinema 4D and see if we can do this. So here's the object we're going to be using for this effect. We've got our little thumbs up arm here, but you can use any object you like. Just keep in mind, whatever object you choose, just try and have your axis or pivot point roughly at the base of the object like this. And that should help with the positioning later on. So before we start, we'll just take a quick look at the settings over here. We've got this set up to be 24 frames per second HD. So you can do the same if you want to follow along. Let's close this. And we also want to make our animation a bit longer than this. So let's make this 160 frames. Okay, so this setup is going to be pretty similar to the abstract ring tutorial we did way back in 2018. And I'll leave a link below to where you can check that one out. So just like we did back in that one, we want to start by making a torus shape. So let's come up here and we'll hide our arm for now. Then we'll head over here. And rather than bringing in a torus itself, we're actually going to start with a null first. And let's just rename this null and we can actually call it torus. We're not going to use one of the pre-built toruses. We're going to create one ourselves. So let's bring in a cylinder instead. And we're going to bend this into the shape of a torus so we've got a bit more control over it. So let's hold shift when we bring that in so it becomes a child of the null we created. And now we want to make this guy a lot taller than this because we're going to bend this around on itself to create a circle. So we can resize this nice and easy with these controls here. And we might just make this a bit thinner as well. And the exact dimensions I'm going to use are 30 in the radius and 1000 for the height. And now to bend this, we're going to use the bend deformer, which you can find up here. So with our cylinder selected, we'll grab one of those and we'll hold shift when we bring that in. And when we do, you can see it's automatically applied to our cylinder and it's also wrapped itself around it perfectly. So now when we go and change the strength of the bend deformer, it should bend around quite nicely. And we'll bend this all the way around on itself to here by making this a full 360 degrees. But you will notice if we zoom in, we're not getting a very smooth circle. And that's because we don't have enough geometry in here. And we can probably see that a bit clearer if we switch on the lines. And you can see we don't have any subdivisions in this direction. So we'll head over to the cylinder and we need the height segments. At the moment, we've only got four in there, which is why we get this four sided shape. So let's bring this up to 30 segments. And now we're getting our torus shape. And actually, while we're here, we probably don't need this many rotation segments. So that's these lines going this way. So we'll delete this one here and bring that down to six. Okay, so now we've got a simple, clean looking torus shape. And if you remember from the abstract ring tutorial, we set this up this way instead of using a normal torus because we also wanted to add a twist in here. So if we select our cylinder again, we can do that by bringing in a twist deformer as well. And we'll hold shift again to apply that as a child. And you can see if we just turn off that bend, this is our new twist we can see in here, which has also wrapped itself to our cylinder. And now if we change the angle of the twist, that's twisting it around. And we also want to twist this in one full revolution. So we'll make this 360 degrees as well. So in theory, this part should line up with this part when we bend it back around again. So we'll turn that back on again. 
And if we zoom in here, you can see that's exactly what's happened. So now we want to animate and rotate the twist, but we don't actually have any sort of offset controls over here. We can only add more twists in there. So we'll undo that. Ideally, we wanna be able to rotate the cylinder, but not have these deformers rotating along with it. At the moment, if we go over here to the coordinates, rotating our cylinder also rotates the deformers because they're children of the cylinder. But we can fix this by just changing the hierarchy up here. So if we were to grab the twist and bend deformer and move them out here, so they're still a child of the null, but not the cylinder. And now if we try to twist the cylinder again, the deformers are still affecting it, but we can twist the cylinder independently. Okay, we'll undo that. And the order of these isn't actually that important in this case. If we were to move this up here, it should still work, as you can see. Okay, so let's animate this. At frame zero, we're going to add a keyframe at zero degrees. Then we'll go forward all the way to the end here. And again, we want to do one full revolution. So we're going to make this 360 degrees as well. And we'll keyframe that. And now if we go back to the start and hit play, you can see it slowly starts to twist around and then it speeds up and slows back down. And that's because we've got easing on by default. So we'll right click on our animated value here and show the F curves. And we'll just move this over here. And now we can see we've got that easing in and out here. So we'll hit Control A to grab both of those points. And then we'll hit this button here to make them linear. Then we can close that. And now if we play that back, our animation stays at a constant speed. And you'll notice when it gets to the end, it loops. Okay, so now that we've got our basic animation set up, we want to clone our arm onto each one of these faces. So let's make our arm visible again and zoom out a bit so we can see that guy up here. And to clone this onto our object, we're going to use the cloner. So with our arm selected, we'll head up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a cloner object. And we wanna make sure we hold Alt this time when we click on this, so it's automatically applied as a parent this time. And straight away, it's giving us a couple of clones going up this way. But we want these clones sticking to the polygons of our torus here. So we'll head over to the object tab of our cloner and we're set to linear at the moment in the mode, but we wanna change that to object. And the object we want is going to be the cylinder. So let's grab that and put that into here. And now you can see our arms have been cloned onto the surface of our object. And that's because the distribution over here is set to surface. And that also allows us to add as many of these in as we want across the surface of the object but we actually want one arm to be cloned on the middle of every one of these polygons. So we just wanna change this from surface to polygon center. And that gives us exactly what we want, but it's also giving us something weird over here. So let's fix that first. And it might be easier to see what's going on if we disable the bend for a second. And if we zoom out a bit, we're getting that issue only at the ends of our cylinder. So let's take a look down here. And these arms are everywhere at the moment, so let's grab that and scale them down a bit. And now we can see how these have been cloned onto the middle of every polygon face. Although these are pointing the wrong direction at the moment, but we'll fix that in just a second. But if we look down here, they've also been cloned onto the polygons at the end of our cylinder. And it's these guys that are poking out when we've got our bend activated. So we can just get rid of this geometry. We'll head back to our cylinder then down to the caps tab and the caps are just filling the holes at either end of our cylinder. So all we need to do is just switch that off and that gets rid of those. So now we can fix the direction that these guys are pointing out. And an easy way to do that is to go back to our cloner and over to the transform tab where we can tweak the rotation of our individual clones. And we just have to figure out which one of these is the right one to change. So that's twisting them that way. We don't want that one. Let's try this one. Okay, that looks like the right one. Let's put that out here. So we need to give this a value of negative 90 degrees. Okay, so let's zoom back out again. And we can scale these arms back up. Okay, and now if we turn our bend back on and frame this up a bit, we're starting to get our effect. 
So let's just turn those lines off now so we can see this a bit better. And we'll hit play. Cool. But it's kind of going in on itself. I actually want these hands to be going outward in the other direction. So if we go to the last frame here and back to our cylinder, we can reverse the direction that this is rotating by just making this a negative number instead. Then we'll keyframe that and give that a go. Okay, that looks better. So now it's just a matter of rotating these arms until we get the look that we like. And we can do that back in our cloner again under the transform controls. We'll just play around with these settings here. So if we tweak this, it does that. Or we could do this one. And that's looking pretty cool. Let's give that a play. Very nice. So let's make that an even negative 50. And maybe we'll just tweak this one a little bit too. Okay. So that's the basic setup for this effect. But you could take this even further by adding in some effectors. So let's have a quick look at that with our cloner selected. If we go up to the MoGraph menu and to effectors, the step effector is a good one to use. So try playing around with that one. But let's just see what we could do with the plane effector. When we bring that in, you'll notice it affects the position of the clones by default. But we'll turn that off. We could also have it affect the rotation of the clones as well here. And that could give you some interesting looks. But we'll turn that off as well. I actually want to use this to have our arms smaller in the center here. And as they twist outward, we could have them grow larger and then shrink again as they twist back into the center. So we'll switch the scale on instead and we'll set that to uniform and just bring this down until our arms are nice and small. And if we want this to affect the inside only, we can come over here and use the fall off. And we'll bring in a spherical field and you can see that guy's come in up here. So we just need to bring that into the center here. So I'll switch views really quickly by clicking the middle mouse button. And we'll go to the front view and grab our field and the move tool. And we'll move that down here. And you can see that's affecting our clones as we move it through there. So we'll put that right in the middle and head back to our perspective view. Then we'll grab the scale tool. And as we scale that up, you can see how that's affecting the clones inside the spherical field. And that effect falls off as the clones twist out over here. And we could even exaggerate this effect if we go back to the plane effector and we make this even smaller, something like that. And if we want to exaggerate the arms as well, we can grab that and scale that up too. So now they're super tiny inside here and much bigger as they go out around here. So let's quickly hide our deformers so they're not distracting us in the viewport and we'll give that a play. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this tutorial. Have a little play around with this technique and see what you can come up with. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And if you make something cool, don't forget to post it on our Facebook group. If you'd like to get your hands on the final Octane Render Ready project file, you can download it from our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials. You guys are the best. And that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.